First Leopard 2 of 4 tank with Soviet armor was spotted in Ukraine. A similar definition is used by some Ukrainian telegram users for a Leopard 2A4 tank that was recorded on video coming out of the forest. It is called so because the commander's RODVD thermal imaging module of Francis Thales can be seen mounted on the chassis, and the turret and chassis of the tank are reinforced with Kontak-1 explosive reactive armor, which is Soviet era. In fact, this is not the first evidence that Ukraine has integrated Contact-1 into German tanks. In April, our report revealed, showing a photo from a Ukrainian source, that the Leopards would receive similar protection. The integration of explosive jet armor is a controversial action, contested by some as harmful and supported by others as necessary. For example, Germany initially tested a similar armor, which some experts call dynamic protection but subsequently gave up. Recently, however, Greece decided to equip its entire available inventory of Leopard 2A4S with factory-produced ERA. We have written more than once about this type of tank protection. Today, we will do it much more thoroughly to find out if this type of armor is suitable for countering anti-tank missiles. Contact 1 ERA. The Contact-1 block consists of two 4S-20 explosive elements enclosed in flat steel plates. Its design allows it to disrupt shaped charge jets during detonation. Although there are gaps between each Contact-1 block, they do not significantly reduce the tank's protection level, only at certain angles. See the diagram below from V.A. Gregorian's book, Protection of Tanks, for a detailed explanation. The end column on the left shows the number of reactive plates a shaped charge jet has to pass through, depending on the impact point. Even if a warhead hits a block edge, the jet still has to penetrate at least two four S-20 elements. Consider a warhead hitting a block center. The jet first intersects with the first block's four S-20 element, then moves to the next block, intersecting with both four S-20 elements. This results in three intersections. The 68-degree installation angle and the 40 milnum gap between blocks don't significantly weaken the reactive armor. The frontal overlap also compensates for any decrease in ERA efficiency due to edge effects. Detonation. Consider a V-shaped layout of 4S20 elements, each containing 260 grams of explosive material equal to 280 grams of TNT. They only have a 9-degree angle between them, However, their high in sensitivity is impressive. They can endure harsh treatment, machine gun fire, and napalm attacks without accidental detonations. Despite catastrophic events, tanks with Contact-1 maintain their blocks, showcasing their durability. So what does this high in sensitivity imply for the Contact-1? Interestingly, its stable plastic explosives don't react to kinetic energy rounds. This trait, while making Contact-1 more vulnerable to tandem warheads, also creates a fire risk. If napalm strikes, the explosive may burn, leaving large tank sections exposed. Each block of this strong armor weighs 5.7 kilograms and the entire set is roughly 1.2 tons. If necessary, the four S-20 elements can be unbolted, leaving only metal boxes on the tank. This is a common safety procedure before long-term tank storage. Fascinating, isn't it? Heat versus contact one, a contact one block on a tank can explode without impacting the adjacent blocks, thanks to the three amelmer sheet steel boxes protecting them. However, these boxes might not withstand a large explosive warhead, particularly those with strong fragmentation effects. An explosion can remove multiple contact one blocks from a tank, and tank-fired heat shells can detonate the block's four S-20 explosive elements. The article, Dynamic Protection, the Israeli shield was forged in the USSR suggests that after a detonation, 931% of a tank turret's protected surface could be exposed due to the loss of contact one blocks. The upper glasses could lose 1671% of its protective armor, and the sides of the hull could lose 3151% of its armor. These statistics were obtained from tests using 9M112M missiles and three BK-14M shells known for their large explosive fillers and potent fragmentation effects. Contact-1, a Soviet armor, can resist a tank-fired heat shell, leaving 70-85% of the armor intact on the hull. The turret sides and hull sides retain 20-30%, 
and 50-55% of the armor post-impact, respectively. Carl Gustaf, or M72, Law vs. Contact 1. When it comes to the power of light, shoulder-fired weapons like the RPG-7 Carl Gustaf or M72 Law, the number of Contact 1 blocks they can dislodge is relatively small. The image upper provides a stark example depicting a T-72B that was hit by a heat grenade in the heat of battle in Chechnya. The specific model of the PG-7 grenade used remains unknown. Interestingly, the combined force of the grenade and a single Contact 1 block was only strong enough to dislodge a few blocks surrounding the point of impact. While this did leave a gash in the skirt, the overall damage was minimal. On the image below, you'll see a comparable scenario involving a Syrian T-72 AV. Here, a single Contact 1 block's detonation punched a hole in the skirt and removed nearby blocks. Method of Operation The Contact 1 Explosive Reactive Armor RA offers more power and effective features than the Israeli Blazer ERA. Its features include more flyer plates, better angling, and a superior sandwich arrangement. Furthermore, it's less sensitive to angle changes. The 4S20 explosive element is a single explosive reactive armor panel, known as dynamic elements in Russian. They consist of two medium hardness steel sheets housing a layer of plastic explosives. They are kept in a 2-3 mm thick steel box, sturdy enough to resist deformation and damage. The thickness of each layer in the 4S20 element is not disclosed. However, it's estimated that the steel plates are about 2.3 mm thick and the explosive layer around 5.4 mm. Its flyer plate to explosive layer thickness ratio is slightly better than the Blazer ERA's 333 configuration. Using the Gurney equation for symmetric sandwiches. On the known data of the PVV-5, a plastic explosive used in 4S20, we can estimate the flyer plate's speed. Given the total mass of a 4S20 element and the mass of the explosive, the flyer plate's velocity is estimated to be around 1.156 kilometers per s. This prediction is further explained in Gurney Energy of Explosives, estimation of the velocity and impulse imparted to driven metal.